we have a amazing fixation with trying to fine-tune global climate by tweaking atmospheric carbon dioxide levels. We have to fix global warming. But there's an ongoing tragedy right now of starving children, which would seem a relatively easy task to accomplish in comparison. Really, it, it probably is. After all, wealthy developed nations have plenty of surplus food and the wherewithal to deliver it to the world's malnourished. The problem is distribution. We have a lot of freaking food. We have so much food that some people say we're dying from eating too much of it. Is it just completely obscene? We have so much food that we're thinking about burning it for our main source of energy for our 300 million people. Is it just completely obscene? We're burning food for 300 million people to give them electricity and cars and heating. We're burning food! They, har they, don't, they hardly have enough food to live. A lot of them don't have enough food to live. What are we going to do mo next that's going to be more obscene and condescending? Are we going to burn our money? The long-term solution is, of course, the sort of economic development and political reform that would enable poverty-stricken nations to develop self-sustaining economies. A short-term solution requires immediate direct aid from developed nations. It would seem that if the developed world's opinion leaders and policymakers truly cared about the children, as they publicly claim, food aid would barely be flying to the world starving. But it's not. All that's flying is around our ubiquitous professions of alleged children concern. CEO of Virgin, Men Sachs, Billionaire Richard Branson offers $25 million to anybody who can develop a systematic method for eliminating 1 billion tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. He said, I want a future for my children and my children's children. But if children are so important to Branson, why not offer a $25 million reward for getting food to those who need it now? Today is 18,000 to 25,000 actual dying tomorrow children. In fact, why don't you make it 50 million, or 100 million, or a billion? I'm sure you got enough to go around. Spent like 100 billion on the resort on your own private island. Nobel Peace Prize nominee Al Gore told New York University audience last September in 2006 that our children have a right to hold us to a higher standard when their future is hanging in the balance. But for the future of 18,000, 25,000 hungry children extends about 25 hours. What's our planetary hero doing about that? They're dying tomorrow. Former United Nations Chief Kofi Annan recently opined in the Washington Post that every day that we do nothing or too little to prevent climate change it imposes higher costs on our children. Right. Too bad his concern for children didn't come a little bit earlier during his 10-year stint as UN head during which approximately 66 million, based on Morris's figures, died from hunger and malnutrition. American presidential candidates are also using Save the Children, like they have for... The last 300 years. Senator Hillary Clinton said on her website, Do we act or do we accept the risk of handling a degraded planet to our children, our grandchildren, and their grandchildren? It is time for us to act. I will be pressing for action in the Senate this year. Barack Obama says a similar comment. You could bet the rest of them do. In the end, it will not be us who deal with global warming's most devastating effects. It will be our children and our grandchildren. The media also claims concern for the children. Thomas Friedman, Pulitzer, the Pulitzer Prize. Had we achieved everything Ford proposed, Gerald Ford, because it was, it was cause, you know, he was talking about Gerald Ford, how good he was, and bashing Bush, would be $20 a barrel oil, not $60 a barrel for oil. The polar ice caps would not be melting, and the polar bear might still have a chance. Our children would have a future. I wonder if Friedman has any idea that tens of thousands of children for whom there is no future tomorrow, let alone a future more than tomorrow, if I wonder if he'll ever learn about the malnutrition tragedy, since the New York Times never sees it fit to report Morris's comments. Moreover, even if we were accepting the argument of the dubious claim that someday around the world global warming may lead to 160,000 or 200,000 extra deaths per year, that claim pales in comparison to the ongoing 18,000 to 25,000 actual dead children every day per year figure. But I'm using the children again. What about the adults?